Hi, I'm Frank Kirkwick, and I'll just show you an introduction here on how to use GarageBand to record voice. Uh, useful if you need to record any interviews or reading assessments, etc. So GarageBand is the guitar icon in the dock, and if it's not located on your dock, you can access it through your Applications folder within your hard drive, or simply type in GarageBand from the Spotlight and select the top hit. So you see, GarageBand automatically opens to the last project that you are working on. So I'm just going to go to uh, File New, and I'm going to create a new project. And I'm just going to give it a title. I'll just put Dialog Demo, and it's being saved in GarageBand. And for dialog purposes, you don't really need to worry about the keys and the tempo, so I'm simply going to click Create. So you see the window opens like this, and you have a keyboard. For our purposes, we don't need that, so I'm just going to close it. And our track appears here. It's a grand piano, and this is where the recordings occur. So naturally, uh, we'll have to create a new track, one for voice. And to do that, we simply go Track, New Track. I'm going to select Real Instrument and click Create. And it appears like this. So I'm going to select here Vocals with no effects. And I'm just going to close this area by clicking the Information tab here. And this one we don't need, so I'm just going to click on that, press the Apple key, and delete. And alternatively, you can go track, delete track. So we're now ready to begin recording. So I have a record button down here, and I can simply click that. You hear that clicking sound in the background. That's the metronome. And if I speak louder, you see the lines become thicker. So I'm just going to stop that with the play button and just rewind it. Play it again. Simply click that. You hear that clicking sound in the background. That's the so that clicking metronome, uh, the microphone picks that up, so we don't want that. So I'm just going to click this and press delete. And I'm going to go to control and unclick the metronome to take away that clicking. Go back to the beginning, and if I press record, now you'll see that uh, that clicking sound is gone. So I'll just record some dialogue here to make it a bit longer and then I'll just press stop. Now what I would like to do perhaps is maybe edit some of my recording. So I'm just going to go back and play it again. Record. Now you'll see that uh, so you see I had some dialogue here and then some silent areas here. So I'd like to crop that out. So I'm just going to increase the magnification here. Go back to the beginning and I'm going to put my playhead here and I can go to edit and select split. Alternatively, I can use Apple T. And I'll just unclick here and then click that again and press delete. And it's gone. And I'll just click and slide this back to the beginning. Play it again. Now you'll see that uh, that clicking sound is gone. So what you can also do is I'll just press Apple T here. And Apple T again here. It's another silent area. So I'll just delete that. I'll just shrink this a bit. And what you can also do is rearrange uh, the dialogue areas. So if I would like this part to begin first and then this to come in after. But the thing you need to be careful is if it overlaps like this that will erase. But also you don't want to have this uh, dead silence here. So I'm just going to go down to here. I'm going to put time. And now that can be slid over with more care. So I can go back to the beginning and press play. Oops, sorry, I pressed record there. So if that happens, edit, undo, go back to the beginning. So I'll just record some dialogue here to make it a bit longer, and then I'll just press stop. Now you'll see that uh, that clicking sound is gone. So that's what you can do there. You can also put in some effects. So if I double click here again, this will reopen, and I go back to my effects, and if I want to Perhaps change it to a helium breath. Just click that, go back to the beginning. Uh, I'll just record some dialogue here to... You can do that. I'll just edit, undo that. No, oh, sorry. Redo that. Just put the no effects back on. Now what you can also do is if you wish to have, uh, to add some background noise or music, I'm going to go into the effects. Alarm.
I'll just click again to stop. If you would like to add that to it, you simply click and drag it to underneath. And you can also slide it to anywhere you want. And I don't want this to be playing at the same time. Uh, just record. So what I'll do is just click here, hold it, select both of these clips, and then move it over, maybe to around here. Now this volume is quite loud, so I'm going to turn that down and maybe turn my dialogue level up. You can also adjust the volume by clicking on these. So what I'll do for this is have this fade out. So I'm just going to click on this line and then click here. And you could decide on how you want that fade out or fade in to occur. We'll just play that now. Uh, I'll just record some dialogue here. So we'll just say we're finished with that now. So I should save it. And then I can, what I w would like to do now is uh, send that to iTunes. So I'll go over to Share, Send Song to iTunes. And it's going to go into my MacBooks playlist. And I can change maybe the artist name here and put my name. And I like to uh, import mine using the MP3 encoder. It might be set as this, but I like to keep mine as MP3, and I have customized mine previously as 192 VBR. So I'm just going to click Share. So it's converting it for me. And it starts playing just in iTunes automatically. So you see I have my MacBook playlist folder here, and there's the track that I have just recorded. And I can alternatively press Apple I and then go to info and I can edit some of the information that I have there as well. So I'll just quit this here. So all your GarageBand files, uh, I'm not going to save this with an iLife preview. All your GarageBand files are saved within the music area in your hard drive under GarageBand. And that's all.